first time that I actually started questioning or having doubts about the charge was when we would go to church and then they would ask us to have a second collection offering. So basically, if you're a Catholic, you know that during the mass, you give money in the first offering, but now they were telling people to stay after the service was over so they can do a second collection. And then they would say that this money is gonna go into repairing the church or buying something for the priest and I'm like but the Catholic organization is a very rich organization why would you need to be taking more money from people and then after that they started saying things like oh if you're going to be giving offering we don't want you to be giving coins we only want notes and I was like even in the Bible Jesus was like just bring whatever it is that you have why is it that you're telling people that you just want notes. I really started thinking that church is some sort of a scam. But at that point, I was not allowed to question anything. Because if you question anything, you're going to go to hell. But of course. <laughs> but that actually doesn't make sense. Because if you went to a Catholic school, a Catholic boarding school like me, then you actually know that hell exists here on earth. Because those people are even much worse than the devil himself. And while I was reading this book, there is something that actually caught my eye about the church. The church is the oldest and most successful business known to man because it knows not only how to recruit customers, but also how to control them with things like doctrines and words like abomination. Because if you look deeply enough into those doctrines, you begin to see that the church just wants to do whatever it can to get as many followers as possible and to keep them under control. This is the way business works. So the Catholic Church tells us to be fruitful and multiply means don't use contraceptives. And people actually suck it up and wind up having 12 children that they can't possibly take care of. And they continue to have more children for fear of using contraceptives and angering God. And really it's not even God who's making them do it. It's the church that has interpreted God's words to its own benefit because the church wants as many members as possible, as many followers as possible. This actually makes sense and I've always I've always wondered why is it that the Catholic Church has a different Bible from the Pentecostal people and yet all of them say they're Christians. Why don't you just have one Bible? And I came to realize it's because the people who really started these religions, they had an agenda and it's no secret that majority of the Bible was actually written by people who were living under a patriarchy, who thought that women are not important, who thought that women are second to men, second class citizens. And that is something that is always being repeated to women. The church has its own agenda and it uses religion to actually control people's choices to control people's lives because honestly it's really easy to manipulate people when you can control them and what better way than to use an imaginary being that you don't even know whether it exists or not you're telling people look this person exists and if you don't do what they want you're gonna go to hell but whatever it is that they're telling you God wants is not what God said because even the Bible is not written by God it's written by people who were inspired by God. And you know by nature that as human beings, we are flawed. Sometimes God tells you to do one thing, but you, you're like, no, I don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to interpret this in the way that I want. And then I'm gonna tell people that God told me to do this. So you cannot really look at the Bible and be like, this is what God said. No, because you don't know. It was a human being who wrote it. The church has really benefited from putting a lot of fear into people and just telling them that if you don't do this, then you're gonna go to hell. No one even knows what the hell exists because the only way you will know what the hell exists if you die. Is there anyone who has died and come back to tell us about the tales of hell? No, we're just going on based of what is written perhaps in the Bible, perhaps where, what your pastor is telling you, what your priest is telling you. But most of the stories, even in the Bible, you can put them under myths. Because when missionaries came to Africa and they heard what Africans were calling spirituality, they were like, no, that, that is not, those are just myths. Those are just stories and tales. Well, you can say the same about the Bible, but the church does not want people to be thinking like that because it means that it will be very hard to control people, especially when it comes to women. There's just this need to control women. Even the Bible, they talk about women covering their heads. People have used religion to tell women that their periods are sinful, and yet it's something natural. So if it's sinful, why did God create women with periods? You just want to control the lives of women. Why? Why is there so much control about what a woman can do, what a woman can or cannot do with her body? Why? 
it's just very suspicious when you start looking into these things or when you start asking questions because it, it just doesn't make sense and they don't give you a logical answer they'll just tell you it is the way it is don't question god and one of the things that I really find to be very interesting is how the church is always pushing women towards marriage. It's always telling women that you have to get married to a man. And they also tell you that getting divorced is a sin. And in the same breath, they tell you that suffering is a virtue. That the more you suffer, the wider the gates of heaven are going to be for you. They tell you over and over about the story of Job, that God cannot give you suffering, that you cannot endure. And this is why a lot of Christian women stay in marriages where they're being abused emotionally, financially, physically by their husbands. Why? Because they are the warriors of God. And because they've been told that divorce is a sin, they're basically trapped in marriages where they are not happy but they cannot do anything about it because God wants to see them suffer for his glory. I'm just not sure how that makes sense because if someone loves you they're not going to willingly and knowingly put you in a situation where you're suffering. In fact they're going to do everything they can to remove you out of it but if the church is telling you that God loves you and the God that loves you needs you to stay in that really bad relationship that marriage because your suffering is for his glory uh, 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 no <laughs> it's just not adding up it's just not adding up i'm sorry but it just doesn't make any sense but the fact that a lot of women actually believe this is just so sad i also find it very interesting how the church is always telling women that they have to be attached to a man they don't even talk about the story of Judith. She protected her community against someone who wanted to come and finish off the whole community. And she didn't have children. She was unmarried at that time because she was a widow. And they did not look down upon her because she didn't have a child. But in the church nowadays, they tell you, oh, you must have a child. You must be married for you to be worthy of being called a human being. But they don't talk about the story of Judith. After she saved her community, she was highly respected and no one forced her to get married or to have children so that she could be deemed worthy. By using her brain to save her people, that was commendable and that was an example that shows that women didn't just come to this earth to just give birth to children. That is not their job. You can have children if that is what you've been called to do because motherhood is a vocation, it's a calling, but you can also use your other skills to help the planet in a different way, to help society in a different way. And that is something that the church doesn't really want. Because you know the thing is, when women are independent thinkers, they cannot be controlled. No one really emphasizes about the story of Esther. She was childless when she actually advocated for her community before her king and the king listened to her. But we have a lot of podcast bros who are like, if you don't have a child, if you're not getting married, what are you even trying to tell me? What is your purpose? There's one that I saw where they, are, they were actually saying, oh, if you take your master's degree, if you take your money, what is your purpose? Like, we came on this earth to use the skills that we have. You get a master's because you are learning something and you can use those learnings to help the society and that can be your purpose. I think the purpose of all women is to just cook in the kitchen, give birth to children. All of these are actually services to men. You think that a woman's purpose is to be servicing a man for you to take her seriously and these are things that are actually taught in the church. The agenda has always been to have women depend on men, to have women really seeing men as their saviors, as their God, so they cannot be able to deviate into anything. While I was reading this one, there's a point here when the relationship between Odenigbo and Olana actually gets to the rocks because Odenigbo actually betrays their relationship. And because Olana is learned, she has her own money, she is independent, she doesn't stay in that relationship for that period because, oh, she doesn't have anywhere else to go she leaves him and she goes to her own house oh my god and she goes to her own house <laughs> because she can which a lot of christian women are actually steered away from because if you are independent and you can literally do whatever it is that you can on your own if the relationship goes south you can leave but that's not going to be good for a man and actually there are studies that suggest that when men get married they get more years in their lives, but when women get married, they actually die earlier. 
because women are really taught to reduce themselves they're just taught to take care of the man the man is taught that when they get into their marriage then they're being taken care of so women generally don't benefit from a lot of marriages don't benefit from a lot of relationships because you're expected to do more and it stresses you and you're not allowed to complain because remember you are a warrior you're the god warrior you're supposed to pass that fear pass the fear because god cannot give you the suffering that you cannot manage wear the breastplate of iron and silver and bronze and fight hey go on your knees wake up at 3 a.m and fight 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 the devil the devil who is coming into your marriage it's your husband who is the devil but now it's the devil the devil your husband is the devil you just need to crush them and go away but now there's another devil somewhere else somewhere else that you cannot see that is trying to finish you and your marriage off my goodness in the same book i came upon a passage where it says women who smoke are prostitutes and it actually reminds me how whatever it is that you do as a woman is always being scrutinized but if men do the same things it's seen as normal for example if you smoke as a woman it's oh you know a bad woman you're a prostitute but why men also smoke but no one says anything in fact one of the things that was actually a culture shock for me when i went to france was seeing women smoke in public like women just walking on the street and they're smoking they're in their workplace and they go outside of the office to smoke they go for a smoke break it was one of the greatest culture shocks because in kenya you don't see women smoking publicly because it's like a taboo for a woman to smoke but it's okay for men to smoke in the street like again why are we trying to control what women do with their lives hmm? it's the same thing with Emoni in with the fire on her she's a teenage mother and she's actually being treated badly because she became a mother at such a young age but no one is treating the man who got up pregnant who is also a teenager the same way so it's like why the double standards if you're going to demonize one parent demonize everyone say that teenagers having kids is bad but when you're demonizing the girl just because she's a teenage mom but doing nothing about the boy then i'm sorry but it doesn't make sense and one of the most important lessons that you can learn from imani here is that even if you become a teenage mom or whatever it is that you plan for your life at a young age doesn't go according to plan i think it's important to dust yourself up and go after what really makes you feel alive she is really passionate about her dreams and she goes after that and although it's really hard for her she knows that her following her dreams it's gonna give her the independence to actually take care of her child and that is one of the most important things we should be teaching women you need to do whatever it is that you can to ensure that you can take care of yourself and also your children and especially in the world that we live in today you know money speaks and we know money speaks because the people from western countries were arriving in africa in their boats they were called explorers but when people from developing in third world countries arrive in western countries in boats they are called illegal migrants <laughs> the difference is money so money speaks and it's really important for each and every woman to be working to be financially independent in the world that we are living in today and in this book the money order the story about money order it really shows how people treat you when you have money and when you don't have money when you don't have money basically the respect is non-existent and we might want to debate about how money is not everything money doesn't bring happiness but the truth is especially in african society money equals respect the more money you have the bigger the cars you have the bigger the house you have the more respect you have in fact the moment you just walk people will bow down and worship you because they just sing money 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 wow i'm telling you just get money and see how people treat you the man in this story who really doesn't have money you can see how he's even treated by the government workers they're just treating you as a vermin what are you coming to the government office to do you are just a nuisance you can see how your neighbors don't even care about you but the moment you have something they want a piece of it they want to take it away from you it is just no respect at all i mean it's just it's so tragic that we've reduced each other to money that we've just commodified even our own relationships 
But you know, the thing is, if you really want to survive in this world, make your money. And if you're a woman, you really have to let go of the toxic mindsets that we've been taught that going after money is not good, that being money minded is not good. But yo, money makes the world go round. So why shouldn't I be money minded? If I'm working, I should be paid fairly. You shouldn't be like, oh my god, I'm so thankful that I even have a little bit of money. If you don't advocate for yourself, nobody is going to. And in a lot of corporate environments, people just want to be grateful for the salaries that they're getting. But the shareholders are really getting millions of profits that they didn't even work for. Because a lot of people who are working in a company are employees. So the people who actually should get the majority of those profits should be employees. But that is never going to happen in a capitalism if people don't advocate for themselves. If you as a woman, you continue behaving as if talking about money is a taboo. But because we really live in a society that doesn't even teach you about making money, it's really important to arm yourself with knowledge. Go out of your way to ensure the time that you're spending on your phone, go to YouTube and learn about making money, managing money, you know or you can pick a book like the little black book that will give you really great nuggets especially if you're a working woman or someone who is doing freelancing stuff it will really give you confidence and the language to actually advocate for yourself and to be more confident like a crash course on how to manage your professional life they have topics like money talks knowing your worth getting paid what you deserve learning new skills public speaking all these things very important in you becoming a kick-ass professional woman so ensure you're taking charge of your life and don't let other people tell you about how you should live don't let no religion no society no taboos hold you from living the dream that you deserve the life that you want and you have to start by asking questions and i find that one thing that has really helped me in challenging the beliefs that i have the things that i was taught is really by reading and you can get these books <laughs> and entertain yourself while learning something i always find that a lot of people are like oh don't read fiction because fiction is not reality but fiction is inspired by reality and i think it's just important to immerse yourself in different stories so you can also understand that the way it is that you're living or your worldview is not the only one so that you can open up your spheres, your worldview, your universe.